Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Wrestling Academy podcast, a podcast all about wrestling history with no linear timeline or trackable syllabus. So if you're a lifelong fan or you're brand new, this is the podcast for you. I am your headmaster. My name is Michael Classic. And I am your homecoming king. My name is Sammy Junio. And this right here is Wrestling Academy colon summer school all summer long we're loosening our ties and letting down our choking wet hair to break down season one of wwe and mtv's wrestling competition show tough enough that aired in 2001 2001 where you could just fight with your significant other in a parking lot (laughs) 2001 fashion sucked back then (laughs) unlike now when fashion is cool Well, in the year 2024, Michael and I are on a journey to get as many YouTube subscribers as possible. As a reward for getting us over 1,000 subscribers, I'm going to put Michael through a table for real, for free. Just go to youtube.com slash at Wrestling Academy Pod. Give us a follow so you can be part of maybe one of the biggest things that either of us have done in our entire lives. Absolutely. This will be the greatest achievement I've ever (laughs) achieved in my life. And we can only do it with your help. Mm -hmm. So if you're watching us on YouTube or you can get to us on YouTube, run over there and just hit the freaking subscribe button. But even though it is summer school, the hunt for Ween Kid is still raging on. Ween Kid. The mysterious phantom lurking in the background of Royal Rumble 2008, making goofy faces in every single shot, kind of hijacking the whole show. The only thing we know about them is they are wearing a yellow T-shirt from the band Ween, and me and Sammy are determined to find them. So if you have any tips or clues, hit us up on our socials. Go to our website, WrestlingAcademy.University, or you can hit up the Ween Kid tip line and leave us an anonymous voicemail. That number is 708 669 45 one, two. This is the first time in Wrestling Academy history I was able to recite the phone number off the dome. <laughs> that is how I'm committed to the search I am. I'm out here memorizing phone numbers because I want to find Ween Kid. We got to find Ween. We got to find Ween. The investigation rages on. But Sammy, yeah, all that stuff, that's the future. What are we talking about today? Today, we are taking a humiliating trip to Yale and then hanging with Mick Foley in episodes 9 and 10 of season 1 of Tough Enough. But before we fully dive into this week's episode, Sammy, can you go ahead and bring us up to speed on everything that's been happening on Tough Enough so far? <laughs> it would be my pleasure. WWE and MTV's nationwide search for wrestling hopefuls ended with 13 contestants living together, training together, and suffering together. By episode 9, the cast has self-eliminated more than regular eliminated. We have seen Bobby Joe, a playboy bunny wannabe, Victoria, a stunt woman wannabe, Jason, a husband wannabe, and Paulina, aw, a wrestler wannabe, all <laughs> walk off the show of their own accord. But in Paulina's case, she limped off because she was very injured. Bad Boy Daryl and Shadrick McGee were the only contestants so far to be eliminated, to which I say... Shame on you, 2001 WWE and MTV, for so many things, but definitely including those eliminations. We have seven contestants left. Dancer Nydia, whose leg injury in the last episode sidelined her while her big wrestling crush, Jeff Hardy, was in the building. Taylor, whose big wrestling inspiration, Lita, lit a fire in her bones. Stone Cold Josh, who is out of the ring antics, raises everyone's spirits except Ivy League Chris, whose awful personality continues to seep out, putting everyone off. Ladies Man Maven, whose dazzling charisma and talent seems to be winning everyone over. And Hot Tub Chris, whose lack of catching on injures everyone else over and over. And Summer School's favorite, Baseball Greg, whose talent has been undeniable thus far, but has back injuries that have been flaring up. And with that, we hop into episode nine, Yale's number one, original air date, August 16th, 2001. Sammy, do you have any alternate titles for this episode? Yeah, alternative title. Please humiliate Chris Moore. Alternate title, uh, I hate Chris. (laughs) (laughs) Alternate title, everybody hates both Chris's. (laughs) 
The alternative title, Everybody Hates Both Chris's, Even His Girlfriend Chris. <laughs> alternative title, Chris is a circle jerk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we start at tracks with the contestants running the ropes. Al Snow stops the students so he can sh- so they can all lift up their shirts and compare these crazy rash slash Super gross. scrapes that they've gotten specifically from bouncing off the ropes over and over again. And Everybody has these super ugly scars on their armpits and yeah. even on their sides. It's really gross. I had no idea that that was an underlying injury. Super gross. Look, super gross. As soon as I saw the rashes, I was like, this is something that should have been obvious. But for whatever reason, you know, we just take it all for granted. Because like, we're seeing them bounce off the ropes all the time. So in my mind, I was like, oh, they must be soft ropes, right? No, they're they're ropes. I feel like I wanted to be a wrestler or at least train to be a wrestler until seeing all of that gross rope burn. I'm like, nah, that's too gross. (laughs) But while all the contestants are comparing scars, our hero, Baseball Greg, heads to the doctor to get an x-ray on his injured back. The doctor is optimistic that he can continue and suggests that Baseball Greg get an MRI so he can be fully cleared to return. With the cast being so bumped and bruised, Al Snow starts a little game to boost morale. It's called the circle game. Here's how it works. If you're able to make a circle with your finger and hold it below your waist and trick somebody into looking at it, you are allowed to sock them in the arm. And shout out to the editors who inserted a tiny little red circle on Al while he was explaining this. Very, very nice touch. Sammy, are you familiar with the circle game at all? I feel like it was a huge thing when I was in high school, but like, did you ever play? Oh, yeah. I played outside of high school. I'm pretty sure I played not three years ago and i feel like i have developed skills to be a little bit diabolical with it and i feel like i could have probably gotten al in 2001 do you think you could get me by the end of this podcast i will try cool that sounds like somebody who can't freaking do it dude (laughs) i just don't want to over uh over promise and then have you edit it out and I'm going to talk a huge game. Sammy, <laughs> there is no way in hell you will ever get me to get circle games, dude. <laughs> <laughs> ah, shucks. Okay, challenge accepted. If I lose, I'll call you the headmaster for one episode, dude. Okay, challenge accepted. That's how confident I am that you're not going to get me, dude. <laughs> okay. While Al is breaking down the circle game, he like assures the audience at home that this is a game that everybody at the WWF <laughs> plays behind the scenes. And it's not long before Al makes a Faustian bargain with ladies man Maven to see who can score three points on the other first. The loser <sighs> must sit on a landmark near the training facility during rush hour in lingerie. Ivy Lee Chris lurks off in the distance, trying to goad Maven into the contest. And Al, ever the crafty veteran, picks up on Ivy Lee Chris's manipulation and forces him into the contest as well. Thank goodness for Al Snow. And thank goodness that he's so wily. I am walking away such a huge fan of Al Snow without even seeing him fully wrestle. Back at the house, Baseball Greg checks in on his competition baby brother, Stone Cold Josh, because tomorrow's the big day. As you'll recall, in episode seven, Bahamas are bust. Josh and Baseball Greg won an opportunity to fly their significant others out for a visit. But due to some scheduling mishaps and some straight up evil meddling from Ivy League Chris, Chris managed to negotiate his girlfriend flying out instead of Baseball Greg's. Chris... You're using your fucking Ivy League intellect, running circles around baseball, Greg. And you know what? I don't appreciate it. He's using his Ivy League intellect and his Ivy League pocketbooks to tip the, <laughs> put his thumb on the scales for a, for a significant <laughs> other visit that should be baseball, Greg's. The next morning, the significant others are inbound towards the house. Stone Cold Josh is, is wandering around the house. He's so nervous. But the first to arrive is Ivy League Chris's girlfriend. Chris, Chris Dean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Her name is Christine, and she arrives to the house, and they head up to Ivy Lee Chris's bedroom, where <laughs> as soon as they get up there, she immediately pulls out a copy of War and Peace. <laughs> Oh, my God. We get it, you guys. You met at Ivy League. <laughs> just, just the most Ivy League book, War and Peace, pulls it out. <laughs> Ivy League bummer. Chris laughs and goes like, huh, you're such a nerd. As if this motherfucker wasn't reading Ayn Rand two episodes ago. Are you kidding me, Ivy Lee Chris? Let's slow it down for a second. Christine is visiting her boyfriend on a reality competition show. 
She brings what? War. War and, and peace. peace. Christine, get the heck out of here. Meanwhile, Josh has real golden retriever energy with his girlfriend, Jamie. And I just thought it was like kind of adorable when they first like meet. You can mm-hmm. tell Josh, he's so nervous. He loves his girlfriend so much. Sammy, who do you think makes the better couple? Stone Cold Josh and Jamie or Ivy League Chris and Christine? As far as what we've seen up until this point, they're equal right now. On first meeting, I'm going to give advantage to Josh and Jamie. Okay, that's fair. Because they're just cuddling and be like, nah, I care about you so much. And Josh is skipping through the house and they're holding hands. Whereas like we cut up to Chris and Christine's room and they're arguing about freaking war and peace up there. So right now, <laughs> Right now, I'd go so far as to say Josh and Jamie, hashtag couples goals. Love looks love looks different in different places. You're right. I look, here's the thing, Sammy. The last thing I would want to do is fight with my significant other on a reality TV show. Anyways, no time to unpack that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> while the couples are canoodling, baseball Greg calls home to tell them that he's scared about a potential MRI. And I gotta say that with baseball Greg's looming injury, it just reminds me that this is such a dick move from Ivy League Chris to come in there and like do the scheduling mishap he did so he could have his girlfriend Christine visit instead. And I just want to underline here, Ivy League Chris is a straight up villain. The contestants hit a club where Ivy League Chris is hesitant to be fully himself around his girlfriend because his work colleagues are watching. Meanwhile, Josh's girlfriend, Jamie, picks a massive fight with him in the parking lot, and she's telling him how she refuses to stay at home dwindling her thumbs while he's out on the road. She mentions that the lives of wrestlers partners are full of absence and uncertainty, and she refuses to take part in any of that. And I think while these are all valid concerns to have, I got to be honest, I was pretty annoyed at Jamie's timing here. Of mm. She was flown out to visit, you know, her significant other who's on this contest. And then in the midst of, of visiting him gets in a huge fight with him on camera about the very contest that he's in. I don't know. Maybe this is something you could talk about later. That's all. That's all. That's the conclusion I came to when I was seeing this massive, like, Hey, we're kind of yelling at each other in a parking lot here. Like, can we not, can we not, can we not do that? Here's the thing though. I don't think the cameras played in at all with the decision to fight. Because if you think about before, just even on the confessionals, when they're on the, on the phone with their families, their families are being pretty fucked up. Josh's mom and dad looked to, into a camera and said, we don't think our son's going to win at anything. And that was a thing where a camera crew flew to their house to like set up a shot and be like, yes, yeah, so what do you think about your son doing it? And Josh's like, mom no. was like, he doesn't have what it takes. <laughs> He's too small and it's my fault. <laughs> it's like, what? So do I do I understand where Jamie's coming from? No, not at all. I think that uh, uh, gosh, it is a little bit tough because it seems like maybe their relationship is super new and sure. she's lashing out a little bit. And it's like the 2001 of it all I think is playing pretty heavy and wrestling in culture in 2001 is also playing pretty heavily. Like she's like, "Well, this profession is a joke to most people." And you're going to make me raise our children by myself to basically be a clown. Like, that sucks. I don't want to have anything to do with it. But I still don't see where she's coming from at all as a fan of wrestling. And just as a fan of people achieving their dreams, who am I? You know what I mean? And who are you, Jamie? It, maybe this is just me, but if if I'm flying up first class or whatever <laughs> or on an all expense paid free ticket, I'm not in the plane stewing about like, I'm not going to. Mm. I'm <laughs> sort of like, well, I'm so proud of my partner. That's what I'm feeling yeah. in that moment. So I guess the main thing that I was learning is maybe MTV is not the best place to air out. A real a relationship <laughs> disagreement. You know, that's not the best place to try to patch it up. Certainly not in a parking lot. I've got to talk about something else here. I cannot believe that Chris was being so fucked up about wanting to see his girlfriend, about needing to see his girlfriend. And the second that she arrives, he teases her and then can't be his normal self around her because he's on this self-proclaimed 24 hour, nine week long interview. Like, you already know how you're feeling, Chris. Don't bring Chris into it. This this greedy Wall Street fat cat threw $150 to, to call his girlfriend a nerd on TV and to do it. Ugh. 
Who has the better relationship? Oh my God. Josh and Jamie fighting in the parking lot or Chris and Christine and their weird like loveless. <laughs> yeah, she, that's the other thing. They're in the crowd. They're in the club and Christine is just like really dancing and Chris has just kind of got his arm around her and is like, like, don't dance on me. Don't touch me with your butt in my crotch. It's like, dude. Yeah, just very strange. Very. He's being weird and self-conscious. But yeah, I, I, I do agree. And I, it did, hadn't occurred to me that he fought so hard to get her out there and then immediately it's just like, it's so weird that she's here. <laughs> like, was, yeah, it's so, did it. Like, what a fucking waste. What a waste of 2001, $150. What a waste of like upsetting baseball, Greg, like totally bad vibes. Where are they on the scale? Here it is. Jamie and Josh have a better relationship only because even though it's super annoying that they're fighting, you can tell that there's love there. And at the bottom line, like Jamie's just bummed that she can't see her boyfriend. Chris and Chris, I feel like he's just going through the motions of what he thinks a dude does. I think he's a fucking psychopath. So you're kind of saying that Josh and Jamie are maybe more relationship goals at this point? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Fair. Okay. Fair. Sammy, no time to unpack any of that because the <laughs> next day we are back at tracks where Al Snow takes Ivy League Chris aside to tell him what his punishment might be for losing the circle game. If he loses the circle game, Ivy League Chris, you know, Harvard Chris, must walk around Yale with a sign that says, Harvard sucks, Yale rules. And he must congratulate every <laughs> single student he sees on going to the right college. And this guy is such a fucking dork, and Al knows it. Maven's in the background saying, this punishment is still better than wearing women's lingerie. And Al's just shaking his hand. No, 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 no. This is this is as this is worse than yours to Chris. And Chris is like, yeah, this is fucking this is going to suck for me. His whole what? world is shattering. His whole world is falling apart. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't believe it. But it did get me thinking, Sammy, what kind of ironic, devious punishment could Al Snow concoct for you if you were to lose the circle game? I think what it would be is what's on the line is a tattoo right here uh! of, <laughs> of Looney Tunes is Tasmanian devil with Taz's face on it, complete with I love Taz. That's the wager. How are you feeling? You legitimately got me. <laughs> Cause I was like, oh, where's the where's the tattoo gonna be? And this is like, of course, that was the <laughs> Damn, dude. Yeah. So, yeah what you would get your a, wager be? The only thing I could think of is I I have to get addicted to smoking cigarettes and then quit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's super good. <laughs> <laughs> Can you also be like, all right, <laughs> Maven, if you lose, you have to dress in lingerie and, and stand outside at rush hour. I believe Chris, you have to go to Yale and say that Harvard sucks. Michael, you have to get addicted to smoking cigarettes and then quit. I'd be like, whoa, that's way worse. <laughs> whoa. And I was like, no, 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 no. No, no, no. This it's is all the same. Chris's is worse. <laughs> These are all the same, you guys. <laughs> and honestly, Chris's might be worse. But Sammy, you are officially, until the end of next episode, the headmaster of Wrestling Academy. I just want to say congratulations <laughs> for winning. Thank you. At the fitness center, Ivy League Chris and Maven decide to team up and take down their teacher, Al Snow. But when it comes to the circle game, Al Snow, he's WCW Goldberg. He's NXT Asuka. Mm -hmm. He's the undertaker at WrestleMania. Al Snow cannot be beaten at the circle game. Al devised a sneaky trick to hit Chris and Maven with a double dose of circle game when he prints out a picture of himself holding up two circles and then he shows it to both Ivy League Chris and Maven. They both get two points scored on them immediately. So then fearing that the end may be close, Maven decides to betray Ivy League Chris, hit him with one final circle. And with that, Ivy League Chris just got himself a scholarship to Yale. <laughs> Here's what I'll say, though. Al's printout was tricky, was sly. I feel like it was a little bit cheaty. They, all of the other players don't have, I'm assuming, access to a printer. 
I bet Ivy League Chris's rich ass does. Not in the shack of a mansion, <laughs> as you like to call it. They have one computer. You think Whoa, they, they Sammy, have probably wh- half a printer? <laughs> Whoa, Sammy, where's all this? Why are you disparaging the mansion so much? What's going on here? I'm just meeting you at your level, dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually really like the mansion. But I, okay. I don't know. I I agree. <laughs> I think, I don't know. I thought it was interesting. It was fun. It was outside the box. And Al Snow insisted to the cameras that it was a total legal move. So I don't know yeah, what more you right. want from him. Al's printout does though show the the high levels of creativity that he has to go to when he's playing the circle game with his compatriots. So I do tip my hat to to Al for that. But you're thinking he should have just just a meat and potatoes circle gotten them both the, re- I the think right way. So. The way yeah, you got I think me. so. Yeah. So Ivy League Chris, his punishment is set. Taylor, Nydia, and Hot Tub Chris spend the afternoon making Harvard suck signs and then get ready to head to Yale. But back at the house, baseball Greg is a wreck. He's in pain. He's been living with uncertainty for a week, and he gets a call from the doctor saying that his back has gotten worse and he must come in for even more tests. But no time to unpack any of that because we are in New Haven, Connecticut, where Al Snow duct tapes a scarlet H to Ivy League Chris's chest and makes him wander around the Yale campus with a sign that reads, I'm Yale's bitch, enchanting Yale's number one. I'm just a little bit curious about what Maven's punishment would have been like. Well, see, here's the thing. We've seen him at Lucky Chang's. We know that when when given the opportunity to dress in a little bit of drag, I think he would have had more fun with it. And I think it would have been more fun. But I do think walking around Yale's campus with Ivy League Chris, I think he would he wears it as a punishment more. Whereas I think Maven is so charismatic that he's immediately sure. just like, I'll make this work for me. So Yeah, sure. I think it would have been a sense. lot more fun. If it if Maven had lost, it is it is fun though to see Chris uh, as humiliated as he is. He takes it so hard. Everybody's having so much fun. And where's Christine in all of this? Is she in the footage? She's not in the footage. So Did she leave already. <laughs> yeah, she she flew back to Harvard, and then <laughs> <laughs> while her man is slumming it at Yale. So speaking of the couples, fresh from mm. their parking lot fight, Josh and Jamie make up in a parking garage. They cry, and Josh reveals that he's so in love with Jamie that it scares him. And it was at this point, I really wanted Josh to channel his inner Randy Orton and RKO his girlfriend just to prove that he doesn't have feelings, (laughs) even though Randy Orton will not debut in the WWF for another year. Josh and Jamie need to relax just a little (laughs) bit. They need to totally relax, dude. They are. They are. They they are one of they're they're a drama couple. They love they love making up and breaking up. You know what I mean? So, so while they're having their their tearful makeup in a parking garage, Chris says goodbye to Christine and he says it was weird having her there and having her see his work persona and that this is work and work and relationships, they just don't mix. Here's a hint, Chris. Don't be so fucking different. You don't need to <laughs> It just really begs the question, why did he fight so hard for this if he was going to be so weirded out by having his significant other there? It all just doesn't really make sense. Because he sucks and there's a power play. At Trax, we see Josh and Ivy League Chris in a practice wrestling match where we get competing talking heads where each person, it feels like they're almost having a dialogue with each other because they're giving their philosophy about being a wrestler and being in a relationship. Josh admits that he would be lost without Jamie, whereas Ivy League Chris says that if he loses Christine in pursuit of his goals, so be it. And I guess I just want to ask you, Sammy, if you were Ivy League Chris's significant other, Christine, Mm. And you're, you you pop on tough enough to support your partner and hear him say that about you. How would you feel? Go fuck yourself, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, oh, cool. Well, let's. You could have just broken up with me. I don't know why you did this on TV. <laughs> yeah, that's a seems like a weird thing to do to invite me over and then break up with me immediately. That's fine, Sammy. No time to unpack any of that because baseball Greg is back at the hospital and it is revealed that he has not one, not two, but three herniated discs in his back. Mm. And it is his doctor's advice that he should withdraw from the competition. This is hard. This is hard this, to hear. This was a, this was a rough one. He goes to tracks. He breaks the news to his fellow cast members and his trainers. And he tells them that he needs, a, he needs to seek out a spinal surgeon. If he has any hope in competing in the future, but for now he must leave. Everyone takes this, hard especially josh 
producer Big reveals that Greg was high in the running to win the entire contest. And I have not really done this for any of the other contestants, but I was so bummed about Baseball Greg that I went to the internet to see yes. what became of Baseball Greg. And here's what I found. Baseball Greg had a nice little run on the independent American independent circuit. Oh, where he wrestled from about 2002 to 2010 under the ring name Greg Matthews. It seemed like <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Greg Matthews did a lot of tag team wrestling and combat zone wrestling and hey. a little bit in Ring of Honor in like 2005. We'd love to see it, Baseball Greg. Rooting for you. And just P.S. If anybody has a link on where I can find Greg Matthews merch, hit me up because your boy wants a shirt. I would love that. Did you see any pictures of him at all? Of him, yeah, I saw him uh, pictures in a CZW shirt. He looked great. He looked like he was doing oh, great. Thank goodness, thank goodness. What a hunk! So, although he doesn't make it to the WWE, he still got to stick with it, and he still got to wrestle. And uh, by the looks of the dates, like he was back wrestling within a year. So, oh, good. Yeah, luckily this wasn't the end of his time wrestling forever. But Sammy, with our number one superstar forced into early retirement, who are you rooting for now? This puts me in a little bit of a pickle because I really didn't have any eyes for anyone else except Baseball Greg. And I think that even if you you tune in to our episode one, I was sparkling about him since day one. I'm a day one Baseball Greg guy. So this is pretty tough. Maybe Stone Cold Josh. It seems like they've been getting us more and more interested in Josh as a wrestler. Yeah, I'm thinking like him or him or Maven, I think, because the uh, the uh, the other two options are what the other two Chris's and I just yeah. mm -mm. so for me, this has now become a competition between Josh and Maven. We'll see cool. who wins. <laughs> we will. So at the end of episode nine, Greg, unfortunately, your back wasn't tough enough. So baseball, Greg, from one back guy to another, let me give you a 21. Oh, my back salutes. <laughs> <laughs> So now we're on episode 10. Its original air date was August 23rd, 2001. And its title is Have a Nice Day. I wonder why that could be. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm sure we'll find out in, within two minutes. Do you have any alternative titles for this episode? Alternative title. I still hate Chris. <laughs> Alternate title. Read Foley is good. Available now. <laughs> Alternate title, Hot Tub Karma. <laughs> Alternate title, You're Self-Eliminating at This Stage? Alternate title, Hanging with Mr. Foley. And let's go hang with Mr. Foley. The episode starts at the house and Hot Tub Chris is on the phone with his buddy. Maybe his dad? He's letting his friend slash dad know about the new nickname he got. Ooh la la. It's Career Killer. Due to the amount of times he fucks up and hurts the other contestants, that's rough. That's, that's rough. bad. That's a bad. That's a bad look. <laughs> yeah, and what else is bad? This list of how he's hurt everyone recently. He's dropped both of his knees onto someone's calf. They could not walk for the rest of the afternoon. When he was rolling out of a pin, he rolled on top of someone's nose, and he said that he felt their nose in his rib cage. And not only that, he punched somebody during a body slam. I'm envisioning it like you've got the person up and then just go. I don't know how it happened. <laughs> yeah, and he doesn't know how to wrestle. He so, does not know how to wrestle. He really doesn't. So we see actual footage of him screwing up in the ring with Ivy League Chris where they made a call to do a leapfrog, and then they end up just bonking each other's heads together in the middle of the ring, which looked pretty nasty, don't you think? Anytime you see people's heads hit, it's not good. <laughs> yeah, it's not good. So how do you how do you feel about Hot Tub Chris's new nickname, Career Killer? It's that's a bad look. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I that's just such a hard to, and when he's talking to his friend slash his dad, he seems proud of the nickname. You know what I mean? Like they gave you this nickname because you screw up so much. You could kill someone's career. Not mm -hmm. good. And so I'm like, huh, yeah, they call me career killer. Cause I punched a guy while I was doing a body slam. And you're like, that's not a cool story, man. That's you should be embarrassed. You should not be like, yeah, hey, I guess I'm a career it. killer. You know, for me, 
I feel like it's less accurate than what his nickname should be, which is Hot Tub Killer. <laughs> yeah, it feels like his nickname should be the Bay Harbor Butcher. <laughs> 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 Shit. <laughs> All right. So now we're back at tracks and our special guest literally waltzes in the doors like it's no big deal. It's the man Mick Foley. And it looks like he just wandered into the gym, not really knowing what was going on. How do you feel about this? He had the energy of, I don't know if you ever went to a doctor or an orthodontist appointment while you were at school mm -hmm. and then your parents took you out to lunch. And then yeah. you got to kind of breeze in and do a nice little half day of school. He really <laughs> yeah. has half day of school energy when he waltzes into the tracks. Oh, facility. sure. With like a greasy bag of, of fast food. Yeah, my mom bought me Burger King. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. After we see Mick with his greasy lunch bag and shaking hands with all the contestants, we get hit fast with some exclu clue footy. That's exclusive footage for those of you who. Um, yeah, I know. I, Sammy, I think I think exclu clue footy. Uh, I think it was everybody. I think it, it's pretty clear. Doesn't need to be explained. <laughs> Great. And in fact, we should say it four more times. Exclu clue footy. Exclu clue footy. The exclusive footage is Mick reading passages from his newest book, Fully is Good, available everywhere. And just, just to Raz, Al, and Taz. One story is Mick refusing to hug Al after a pretty, after what he thought was his last match, like there's a line of people to hug. And he goes, and then I didn't hug Al. It's like, okay, cool. And then the other one is a kind of a longer story with a longer setup about Taz and how they were all up for a commercial with Jerry Seinfeld and it was like a credit card commercial and they were all kind of asked the same question which is well what moves can you do without hurting Jerry Seinfeld during the interview everybody's like it, Mick Foley's like to try to get this job I was lying about like I could do every single move and he was listing a bunch of complicated sounding moves and being like and Jerry, he'll never feel a thing. The, uh, the commercial ends up falling apart. We don't get our Jerry Seinfeld wrestling commercial, unfortunately. And so while the the wrestlers who were up for the commercial were just, you know, commiserating, having a little talk about it, Taz just popped off and apparently said like, oh, I don't know about you guys, but if Jerry ended up in the ring with me. He said that to the producers during the audition. <laughs> so they're like, hey, so what could we, moves could you do without Jerry Seinfeld without hurting him? And Taz is basically like, if he steps in the ring with me, he's taking his life into his own hands. <laughs> like, <laughs> Why would you say that? <laughs> I also wanted to mention that during the guest spots at Trax, during specifically Mick Foley and Kurt Angle, Taz is in the background just being so distracting in the ring. Like while Kurt was up, Taz was right behind him, shaking his foot the whole time, dangling on the ropes. And then when Mick was there, Taz was in the corner, in the facing turnbuckle. away from everyone on the ground and just throw it ch chiming in from where he was what but he would have to literally he would have to literally turn back and be like another thing about that and you're like <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> it's like why are you here dude <laughs> how much are they paying you they might be paying him jerry seinfeld credit card commercial money Ooh yeah. la la all right so it seems like al and taz are feeling a pretty loosey-goosey with Mick around. They're all goofing off in front of the contestants, and Taz is making jokes that are actually kind of funny, and they don't even cross a line into bullying. This is the co the camaraderie, right? Where it's just yeah. like, oh yeah, Al Snow and Mick Foley, they've known each other for years, and he's telling fun stories about them on the road and hijinks they got into, and I gotta say, exclusive footage-wise, this is what I've been wanting all season long. Every time we get an exclusive footage, it's always so weird and boring. <laughs> but not when Mick Foley's here. Mick Foley is reading his book and telling really fun stories. Mick admits to hating being a wrestler in the beginning because it was only getting hurt for a very long time, which is weird because... We're talking about Mick Foley, who fell through a hell in a cell twice. We're talking about Mick Foley, who Sabu hit seven times in the head with a glass bottle until it's shattered. We're talking about Mick Foley, who just happens to carry a bag of thumb, a thousand thumbtacks with him around. We're talking about Mick Foley, who had Big Van Vader yoink off one of his ears. <laughs> 
this McFoley, that McFoley, our McFoley hated getting hurt. Yeah, you're telling me when Big Man Vader was yoinking off his ear, he was just like, I hate that. <laughs> like, that's crazy. <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> that's not the that's not the McFoley we know. That was some exclusive footage. That was a true what? exclusive. That was a true exclusive footage. Jeez. So after Mick admits to hating being hurt, he mentions that he knows about Triple H's visit and how Triple H was really scary. And he tells the contestants that he's going to be easier on them. And then he asks the questions, how would you feel if you don't win the competition? Is that being easier on people? Because I'm not sure. I think it is. Because what he says is basically, I think when he's when he's referring to the Triple H thing, where he was, you know, Triple H, he came and he was so intense. And he was basically like, what you been up to? I tore my quad and I was grateful for it and I will do it forever. And you're just like, okay, that's fine. And he was like, say goodbye to your family. Cause you'll never see your children learn how to walk or like whatever. He was saying all that. And I think Mick Foley comes in. And he's like, I got kids. I got a, a wife and kids at home and I love, I love them and I love being there for them, but I also love wrestling. So I do that too. And you can have them both. And I just would like to think it cut to bodybuilder Jason at home being like, wait, you can? <laughs> like, wait, what the fuck? Just like wait, a piece can... of meat in his mouth? <laughs> yeah, eating a friggin' porterhouse steak. Like, <laughs> oh, what? I didn't know that. <laughs> well, before Mick leaves, Al ribs him a little bit and breaks the fourth wall and actually promotes his book. And he goes, read Folia's book. Available now. After Mick leaves, Al gets in the ring with hot tub career killer Chris. And this time in the ring is no different for Chris because he messes up, which leads to Al losing his temper and gets him in a nasty looking arm hold. And while he's doing it, he's lecturing him about how unsafe he's being. I got to be honest with you, Sammy. This Mm -hmm. was a straight up receipt. Generally, what a receipt is, is if you accidentally hit somebody full contact, Mm -hmm. there's sort of a unspoken agreement that the person you full contact hit has every right to full contact hit you back when Mm. they decide to. So sometimes you'll hear somebody messing up a chair shot and then later down the line getting hit with a pretty brutal chair shot. It's just one of those unwritten things that's in the background of wrestling. And so I think it's it is kind of pretty scary to see. Right. And it's like this is your teacher. This is your mentor doing it to you. But I'm also overcome with the fact that if hot tub career killer chris had done this during a real match somebody would have done this to him or worse and so yeah that's fair i think it's just kind of it's been six weeks of this guy hurting people and that's getting to the point where he's almost hurting the trainers yeah i think it's a little bit old school it's a little bit barbaric but also at the same time it's something that happens in wrestling you know if he did it to josh i'd be upset but he did it to hot tub chris who is a bad guy how did you feel seeing it though i don't know i feel a little conflicted i feel like it's been six weeks he should know it but it's just scary it's scary to be that like frustrated because i'm I'm coming from somebody who has been frustrated to the point where like you want to just squeeze someone a little bit and it's just not it's not a nice place to be and so yeah i think in general it's pretty it's pretty scary overall but it's fine. It's hot tub, Chris, you know, at the same time. I think what made it a little scarier, right, is Al Snow has been, at least in the footage we've seen, he's the level headed, yeah. reasonable one who's very supportive of people. And generally, yeah, if you were going to see somebody dole out a receipt, it probably you would expect it from maybe Miss Jackie or obviously from Taz. <laughs> so to see the nurturing teacher straight up get somebody in an arm bar because they keep messing up. Yeah, that that's scary. But at the same time, he would have gotten a real receipt. If if he were in a real match, he would have gotten a real receipt. And so I, I yeah. can't fully fault it. But again, I also think maybe I'm a little bit biased because it happened to somebody that I don't really care for too much. Sure. Yeah. You know what? We cover complicated stuff here at summer school. <laughs> yeah. Summer school where things get complicated. <laughs> Speaking of more complicated feelings, Josh is back home. And he's on the phone with his girlfriend, Jamie. And to me, she's being really needy and really clingy. She's basically whimpering about how much she misses Josh. She even goes so far as to ask him if he can still smell her in his room. Which I took to mean, like, did she 
like rip a huge fart. <laughs> 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 We're obviously two girlfriend guys. I'll stop here and say that Josh isn't showing any sort of annoyance. In fact, I think that you know he's expressing they're like i love you too i miss you so much She's and he like, said last episode he was so in love with her that he was scared you know yeah he's scared he's scared of how much he loves her and then she's like you know can you smell me in your room still and he's like yeah and then that just sends her off into a spiral she starts whimpering some more and she's like oh, I just love you so much. and just get a grip, you guys. I, I think I'm also maybe being a little unfair because these are what, 20, 20 year old kids. You know what I mean? This might be their first major relationship. We don't know. But at the same time, sure. I also think I also think Jamie's probably not able to communicate what her real fear and concern is. And so it is just a situation where she's trying to be like, whole. I have anxiety about the future of our relationship. Can you hold that? And instead of being able to communicate any of that, right, it comes to like, can you smell me in your room? Do the sheets <laughs> still remind you of me? And it's yeah, sort of Jamie, like, we can smell your stink. Yes. <laughs> hey, Jamie, I'm kind of like trying not to get killed by hot tub Chris <laughs> in the ring. So I'm, I'm sorry. I don't think about you every second of the day. I am like trying to win a reality competition to chase my dreams. But yeah. again, she still wants to be like, is there any room for me? And I think Josh has made it abundantly clear that there is. But yeah. I think if you're an anxious person, sometimes you need to be reminded uh, multiple times. Sometimes instead <laughs> of having a reasonable conversation, you need to get in a huge fight in a parking lot. You know, it's just like it's relationships true. are so weird. It's so complicated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Maven receives an email from his aunt about his mom who has been battling bone marrow cancer. And Maven has a decision to make. Does he stay and be part of a television show or does he go and see his mom for a couple of days? Is he being selfish? Josh wants him to stay. But if Maven leaves for good, Josh is also going to pack his bags. I did not see that strong of a friendship through the screen. Did you? Because I honestly thought it was like baseball Greg and, and Josh were boys. That's what that's what pretty much every single episode was about. So then yeah. to all of a sudden be like, Phew. If Maven goes, I go. I was like, whoa, where where was that? He's saying all these things about, you know, I love you more than you'll ever know. And I care about you more than you'll ever know. So maybe Josh is just not used to expressing anything. Alternative title for the episode. Still Josh's run deep. <laughs> <laughs> At Trex, Maven presents his dilemma to Al and Big, and they say that he can go for a couple of days and that family is way more important. Maven makes the decision to leave because he'd rather see her than regret anything. I'm glad to see somebody have just a normal human reaction, a, a normal human non-Ivy League Chris reaction to major life events. It was just nice to hear Maven be like, yeah, that's my mom. I would rather, I would much rather be with her than be at training and, and miss miss something but also could you imagine if he had asked triple h from episode three for time off oh, shit. <laughs> could you imagine if he had asked taz from episode two from for time off he'd be like you could go visit your mom if you fucking mud wrestle me for it bro <laughs> so producer big comes around the house for his traditional surprise friday challenge which i still think I don't know if we were privy to before this episode. We got one Friday challenge, the mud wrestling. <laughs> right. There was so, the dart. There was the darts Friday challenge. There was the him sneaking in with a bunch of VHS tapes under his arm challenge. <laughs> <laughs> that was after hours Friday. So there was this... the Friday challenge where Big kind of took Tall Paulina aside in the Bahamas and was like. You got the fucking look to be a star. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then hugging her. There was the Friday challenge where when she self-exited the competition, he hugged her a little too long and was just like, be in Reach touch out. with me. Reach <laughs> out. Call me. <laughs> oh, so man. There have, been a lot of big. there have been a lot of Friday challenges, I guess. <laughs> okay, shit. So this Friday challenge turns out to be indoor rock climbing. Why? Well, producer Big says it's a test of concentration, intensity, and hand-eye coordination. He's got he sets two challenges up for the contestants. First one is an outcrop challenge. Uh, the person who climbs the highest wins, and that outcrop in an indoor climbing wall facility is like this is the rock, 
and then there's something outside, and then there's there's holes on the outside, and so you kind of scramble. So if the yeah. rock face was a human body, the outcrop uh-huh. would be like just that cake, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a so, fucking caked up mountain, dude. That's yeah. what an outcrop is. <laughs> And the second challenge was a speed competition on the vertical wall. And it turns out that Stone Cold Josh is a natural on the wall. Were you surprised at all? I wasn't surprised because he had such a connection to the Hardy Boys that it mm. seems like scampering up ladders and climbing stuff and flipping around. That's Stone Cold Josh's wheelhouse, dude. Yeah, that's fair. And I will say that we do get footage of Ivy Lee Chris coming down the wall and producer Big goes, ah, that's a DNF, did not finish. Here's the thing. And just, I mean, for people just tuning in, a DNF is kind of the worst thing you can get in a tough enough challenge. <laughs> yeah, it did not finish. <laughs> to, to get, a, to get a, a DNF, that's gonna that's really going to affect his chances moving forward. It really will. Could you imagine it gets to the end of the contest and they're going through and they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. He's got the look, he's got the talent, but he DNF to rock climb? He's out, dude. <laughs> we can't that what hmm. Yeah. We only need people who F. CF <laughs> can, can finish. finish. <laughs> <laughs> wow, a DF. As a reward uh from winning the climbing competitions, Josh gets a free pair of shoes. From Foot Locker. From just, it's just the most subtle product placement you'll ever see. Where it's just like. So subtle. <laughs> so subtle. Super and then everybody's subtle. walking around in Foot, foot Locker t shirts for the next couple episodes. <laughs> <laughs> just looking like a damn ref around the house. At the hospital, Maven has an emotional reunion with his mom. And while he's gone, Josh is feeling his absence deeply. In fact, the whole entire house feels Maven's absence so deeply everyone decides to make him sweet little cards to leave on his bed josh is so sad without maven that he doesn't even like the house anymore and he decides that he's gonna quit today he says i'm way more sensitive than i'll ever admit so i think losing baseball greg getting in that huge tumultuous makeup breakup cycle with jamie Mm. i think Our sweet, sensitive Josh, it's just more than he can emotionally handle. But now he's going to (laughs) self-eliminate? I think perhaps he was a little hasty with self-elimination. I think think maybe Maybe. Maybe. in the light of day, perhaps cooler heads will prevail. I hope at least. Hot Tub Chris gets on the phone and says maybe his time isn't right now either. He tells the girls that he's not ready. And with two boys down in the dumps, producer Big rushes over to the house for a pep talk. He does a surprise Friday challenge, the don't quit the game, the don't quit the show (laughs) challenge. (laughs) With a blue solo cup in hand, Big tells them that life gets hard, but how they react to the hard stuff determines what kind of person they are. And while producer Big is making this cliche speech to the contestants, the cameras cut back and forth from a slumped over Josh with no will to live and a contemplative career killer, Chris. Could you just imagine being like, you guys, you got to roll with the punches. And that's why career killer, Chris, you <laughs> should stay in this contest. <laughs> right. It's such, it's such like, there's so many, there's so many self eliminations, so many people sending themselves home. The show must have been a producer's nightmare. It's crazy. So I can kind of see why producer Big was like, no, 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 no. You, one of you sucks, but you should. should <laughs> one of you sucks, but let us decide that. <laughs> <laughs> you let us, let us, let us take you out. Um, we so we bought, could actually. We bought 11 red tags and we've only got to use two of them so far like can we please guys can we please stick with it career killer chris we need to change the optics of who we've eliminated ourselves you have to stay so we can do this for us (laughs) yeah yeah hopefully here's the thing here's what we know about career killer chris he he knows what makes good optics (laughs) Now we're back at Trax, and Al notices that Hot Tub Chris hasn't changed out of his clothes and that they probably need to talk. Hot Tub Chris says he doesn't know what happened, but he lost the need to be there. 
And the response to him leaving is a lot less emotional than some of the other contestants. I'm pretty sure right after he said that he's going home, Al just slapped him on his chest. <laughs> I was like, all right. He yeah, he comes through and he does the whole thing. He's like, yeah, I just, I just don't know if this contest is for me. I think I got to I got to bow it. And Al Snow's basically like, yeah, well, you know, you just do what you got to do, man. <laughs> like, all right, guys, let's <laughs> circle up. We got to get going. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah Tulu. That really, it, that would have, I look, I know we've been pretty hard on Hot Tub Chris mm-hmm. for bad decisions that he's made and he deserves to be punished for. But if I like really racked my brain and I, and I stepped to my trainer man to man and was like, Hey, I just, I don't think this is for me. And they go, okay. <laughs> I, I would be like, uh, uh. I would, you, you would just... see me implode. I would just <laughs> shrink into my body so much. I would turn into a diamond <laughs> And then and then Al Snow would just have a diamond of me that. <laughs> oh, man. So Chris makes his rounds saying goodbye to everybody. Everyone hugs him. But you can kind of tell that they're like, all right, dude, we'll see you later. Thanks for hurting me, you dumbass. And on his departing voiceover, Chris references Shawn Michaels famed. I lost my smile. If you know anything about the history of the I lost my smile, that's not like <laughs> that's not <laughs> indicative of that was not a good decision that Shawn Michaels made. <laughs> here's here's what we Let's did just say hear. he lost his smile to get out of dropping the title. <laughs> <laughs> what we didn't hear during Chris's departure is Al Snow saying sorry for giving him a receipt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Al Snow was just like, yeah, he deserves it. Like, it, it no, truly, no guilt on Al's face. Remorseless. Ever remorseless <laughs> about like hey i put this guy in an arm bar and then he quit <laughs> there, there's no recognition of like hey i put this guy in an arm bar yesterday and then he quit the competition the next day <laughs> just couldn't care less no no snar no no sorry when it happened no sorry uh that you're leaving no just say straight don't up co- don't let the door hit you with the ass on the way out 100 <laughs> percent. like everybody was waiting for him to leave and I wish that there was a moment. I wish there was some exclusive footage, some exclu clue footy of Al being disappointed. Yeah, just exclusive footage. You see <sighs> Al Snow rip up a red tag. <sighs> Maven returns to the house and everyone is elated. We all missed our ladies, man. They break the news about Hot Tub Chris's departure and nobody at all defends Chris or understands why he left, but they all kind of <laughs> thumb through his goodbye letter. Like, I don't know what this is. <laughs> That's humiliating. Yeah, it, just, it could be any less of just like, oh, well, oh man, the house is just a little emptier without career killer in the, in the mix. It's just, it's, it couldn't be more like, ah, uh, so is there still soda in the fridge? Or what do we do? <laughs> We thought about you, Maven. Like it's like okay, yeah, Maven. Cool. We're so glad to have you back, dude. We lo- we missed you, Maven. <laughs> <laughs> Once everyone settles down, Maven opens up to Josh on the porch in a real Dawson's Creek moment. He says, "You don't quit for me, and I don't quit for you. Are we sure that these guys are tough enough?" Again, this this whole like th- th- it's revealed this episode that these yeah. guys are this close. Yeah. So it, we've got a whole we've got a whole 10 episodes where these guys have not really interacted. And then it cuts to them. I wish I knew how to quit you. Like what? Just having a real Dawson's Creek seventh heaven level. <laughs> We're in this together. <laughs> We're going to finish together. <laughs> where was this? Where was this in any of the other episodes? So it, it was. Yeah. I found myself going, wait, What? <laughs> Yeah, it was very strange. And what also is strange is that for four episodes, we didn't get any regular eliminations. How do you feel about who is left? I guess, yeah, it's 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 really strange. The past four episodes, it's been less of a reality competition show and more of a melodrama. Mm-hmm. As somebody who loves drama, mm-hmm. I love what's happening here. <laughs> And I kind of think that once we get rid of Ivy League Chris, Mm. everything in the house will be as it should. I know I keep moving the goalpost, right? Before it was just like, hey, we got to get Hot Tub. We got to get Hot Tub Chris out of the house. And now that Hot Tub Chris is out of the house, it's like, you know what? We got to get Ivy. We got to just get rid of all the Chris's. And then I Mm -hmm. think the Tough Enough house will be a home. And then, Sammy, that home will be ripped apart 
because oh. only two people can be crowned tough enough champion. <laughs> That's wild to me that we're we're pretty close to the end, aren't we? We're pretty close to the end. Do you have any? I mean, our our whole strategy, our whole game plan, the people we've been rooting for, they've all disappeared. So, moving into these final episodes, do you have, have do you have any strong picks emerging, or are you kind of like a free agent again, and you're just going to see who impresses you over the next few episodes? I think between Taylor and Nydia, I think it's going to be Taylor. I'm rooting for Taylor as well. For the dudes, as long as it's not fucking Chris. I think for me, just out of the three slight edge to Josh because he's just so good at scrambling up a rock wall, which is just an essential sure. ingredient to being a WWE superstar. So my money, yeah. Sammy, I'm taking all my money out of my account and I'm putting that, I'm putting that shit down on Stone Cold Josh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he doesn't have a DNF on his permanent record. Like someone we know. Yeah. He effed. Let's just say that <laughs> he got to that rock wall and he- my boy, Josh, F, Finished. <laughs> Sammy, that was our episode nine and 10 recap. We just want to thank you for listening to Wrestling Academy, hosted, produced, and edited by me, Michael Classic, and your headmaster, Sammy Hudio. Follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Wrestling Academy Pod, or you can send us an email at Wrestling Academy Pod at gmail.com. Follow rate and leave a positive review wherever you get your podcasts but check out spotify where we have q a's or polls for every episode and please if you have any information on ween kid go to our website wrestlingacademy.university to send in an anonymous tip or call the ween kid tip line and leave us a voicemail at 708-669-4512 It's about to be a Chris-free zone. No more Chris is on tough enough. (laughs) Chris is dismissed.